word conversation is, is of course, totally key. Now, one thing that I think it's worth uh, um, reflecting on is that the, the conversations that we now need to have that about you know what, what's going to be how do we get the journalism that we really need that our communities really need are not new conversations. They're conversations that have been going on um, in every social justice community, in the uh, media activist communities, uh, and, and in the past five years, we've, in the past five or six years, we've had the rise of something called the media democracy movement. But that wasn't invented five years ago. It's been going on for many years. Um, and media activism going as far back as the civil rights struggle, and, uh, and certainly before mm -hmm. that. What we're seeing now is that the concerns that we've all been banging our drums about for some time, we don't have to bang our drums so loud anymore <laughs> to get people to, uh, because everybody sees that there's a crisis in journalism. And I think that's gonna make, I mean, this is, uh, this is where some of my optimism is, is that there will be um, more um, willingness to discuss creatively some of the solutions that we're, that we're offering up today, um, including even something like um, public funding for, for different kinds of journalism, which can mean many different things that we may talk about a little bit later on today. So we've got our web restored, so we can, uh, anybody who is uh, tweeting can Twitter with the hashtag News Ecology, and I see there are a number of folks who are doing that already. That's fantastic. So now I want to uh, turn to uh, Stephen Silla, Stephen is somebody who has uh, journalism and a concern for journalism's role in society in his blood, and has been uh, has worked as a journalist, the Christian Science Monitor, yes, magazine, other places for uh, uh, for quite a while, and has also been deeply engaged in community discussions um, about the future of journalism at a very creative and very high order with uh, a, a conference series or what he describes as a floating think tank called. Journalism that matters, which has taken the form of conferences at different sites around the country that brings together uh, working journalists from the uh, uh, establishment and alternative media, people from the business side of print broadcast journalism, media academics, uh, community members, um, the group formerly known as Audience, as he sometimes says, uh, all discussing together. You know, what is the stake that we have in together in, in uh, sustaining quality journalism? This conversation went away, it grows out of the conversations we're having around Seattle, but also very much is in the continuity with Steve's work. Um, Steve, the, the Journalism That Matters project has been considering new alternative ways of thinking about the futures of journalism for several years. And the need for these conversations has seemingly become a lot more acute uh, in the past several months. There are a lot of different answers being discussed right now other conversations in Seattle and around the country. From your perspective, are we asking the right questions? Uh, Jonathan, in a word, no. <laughs> uh, but I want to, before I elaborate, um, thank you for putting together this panel. Um, and thank all of you for being here. Because I think that sitting together and having this kind of discussion is part of how we are going to figure out how to sustain quality journalism locally and nationally. And as Jonathan said, that we've been pulling together these really diverse groups of people actually for nine years now um, to take a look at what is possible now. In fact, we've, in Journalism That Matters, we've uh, started to identify the sixth W in journalism. You have the five Ws, who, what, where, when, why, and there's also a how in there. But the sixth W is what's possible now. And I think that's a question that's not being asked either by journalists when they do normal stories because we tend to focus on the conflicts rather than to ask the people we're, we're um, interviewing what's possible now. Um, not just the negative possibilities, or not just the positive possibilities, but the whole range of possibilities. And I think that that kind of journalism, which actually Common Language Project is doing, they started out asking uh, that question. Um, it is going to change the way the, the story of our community is framed. And I think that that's another thing. But another question that's not being asked is what would make this a healthy community? Uh, and then what kind of storytelling should we do that will help make it a healthier community? Um, Yes, these maps. I wanted to just say that 
one of the things that's evolved out of journalism that matters. We had a session at Silicon Valley at, at the Yahoo headquarters a year ago, and we wanted to show the technologists what journalism looks like or looked like in the past. Here's how it used to work. You start out with sources who feed ideas to reporters, and photographers, they develop what's called the nut graph or the journalistic jargon for the essence of the story in a short sentence. Editors take a look at that and, and everybody bets it. The publisher finds advertisers to help pay for the whole thing and the audience goes out on the other end. It's a linear model. But what we're in now is an emerging new news ecology and the technology people helped us kind of identify, well, what are the key elements of this? It's just beginning to start. And you have the um, audience becomes the community. And the community in the new news ecology is just as important as anybody else. So the journalists, um, I think, have been so arrogant in the past as gatekeepers of what stories are important to tell. And now we have the op option and the actual reality of all of us being able to say this is an important story. And um, we can work with journalists, I think, better now than before because the reporter's role is becoming more like a beat blogger. So instead of just telling the story from their own perspective or the perspective of the people in their Rolodex, they have anybody on the World Wide Web who wants to communicate with them about what they're writing about who can then increase their uh, wisdom. Uh, Naomi, when you were talking about the plethora of information, I was reminded that my mentor, Robert Theobald, used to say, when information doubles, knowledge halves and wisdom grows. <laughs> and I think we're kind of in that place right now where we're all trying to figure out how do we find the information that we need to function, and the question that you asked about what the civil society, um, in this new ecology. So the editorial role, the sense maker role, is more important than ever. And I'm hoping that some of the uh, people who've been laid off from the PI uh, will take up, take up that role. But then you have some new roles like the information architect, trying to figure out how do we present this information in the online environment that's going to make sense. Or the community weaver, the person who's facilitating conversations. Uh, about what matters. And in fact, uh, one of the things that um, Dan Gilmore, who wrote the book we, um, we the Media, says, and has been to a bunch of our gatherings, is that journalism is going to be a lot less lecture and more conversation. So we definitely want to invite some of you to have a conversation as part of this presentation. Um, I wanted to mention, though, that there are some exciting possibilities happening locally with the West Seattle blog. Uh, Tracy Record and her husband are actually making money serving West Seattle with a very exciting interactive blog. Um, Valor has one. I'm not sure whether they're making money yet, but there are some neighborhood-based, you know, hyper-local sites here in Seattle that are being looked at as examples. Um, and then the, another question that's not being asked is, what's the connection between the local and the global, or what we call the global? And again, Common Language Project has done a lot in that realm. But Ethan Casey is a Seattle-based journalist who's now in Pakistan blogging. And if you go to his website, aliveandwellinpakistan.com, um, you can find better information than you're seeing in most of the mainstream media about what's going on. So those are a few of the questions that uh, aren't being asked. I think maybe the most fundamental one is, what is news? I really, uh, Jonathan, when he said I had ink in my blood, my father was a newspaper publisher, and my blood has been boiling for a long time up by the fact that um, we journalists have been so arrogant that we haven't thought, rethought what really is news. And we haven't engaged citizens very well in helping us figure out what's really on the leading edge. There's so much innovation going on in Seattle that you do not read about in the papers. You may sometimes hear about it on KBCS or KUOW. But I, I mean, I'm personally aware of so much innovation that's happening here. 
that simply isn't covered in mainstream media. I think we have the opportunity in this college to do something about it. So we'd like to actually ask you now to help identify what are the right questions? What are questions you have about this new ecology? We'd like you to turn to somebody near you. You can stand if you want. And just for a couple minutes, identify a question or two that you then want to bounce back to us. We'll Twitter those questions, and we'll try to see how many we can get to. So please take a minute or two right now to turn to somebody near you and say, here's, what's, here's what I'm thinking about. Here's a question that's important to me. Thank <laughs> you.